All right, guys. So now we're getting in with watercolor. What we're going to start doing is looking at the slow building process of layering color using water, pigment, and just slowly building the transparent washes. Now, one thing you got to realize and understand when you're working with watercolor, as I said, is patience, right? Water takes time to dry. One other thing you have to do when you're watercoloring is think of the background. Okay, I have this really, really out of focus, loose variation of colors in the background. I always want to paint watercolor from the background to the foreground. So I wouldn't even start painting the subject of the flower until I've started putting some of the background washes in. The other thing you need to do is work light to dark. So whenever I look at any area of my subject, I have to look for the lightest color. So in the back here, I've got this really pale uh, yellow, and I've got a really pale green. So those are the washes I'm going to put in first in the background. These darks and things, I'm going to build slowly after I put in that background. And I can see that the green background really is kind of just within this area, right? It's a little bit in here. But this is all shadow, so I'm going to mix those darker colors uh, later. All right, so I'm just going to kind of put in clean water first. It's called the wet and wet technique in this background area. So what I did, I have my reference. I redrew it lightly with our wonderful H pencils that you guys got in your go bags. I kept everything light. And if you look closely, you'll see that here's this white area of the flower. I really, really lightly drew the basic shape of that because I'm going to make sure that that stays the white of the paper. And I don't want a dark line that outlines that edge because I have a soft pink around that. Any of the highlights, right, this strong highlight right here, I just gave myself a light reference line here as to where that separation is. All right. So what do we have? Well, we've got our watercolor set. We've got a small water cup. We've got a paper towel. And we've got some brushes. Now I'm just going to move my water cup off to the side. And for this background area, I'm just going to use a half inch flat brush and clean water. All right, so I'm just going to go in just with clean water. So I'm making sure my brush is clean first over here in my water cup. I'm going to take, let me kind of bring that in so you can see I'm just how I'm doing this. All right clean my brush off, take some of the excess water off, just a, a touch, and I'm going to go in around carefully. That's why I'm using a flat brush. I'm going to go in up to the edge, and you'll see the shine start to show. Right? I'm using the flat brush to go around the edge of the detail of the flower, and I'm just painting it in with clean water. It's not dripping and I'm using some of the water that I have down that's kind of puddling and I'm pulling that down into other areas. And again, I'm using the square brush because I can cover more ground and I can also get in edges carefully. Now, I could very well put some of the green down where this is with the clean water in the wash, but for now, all right, just put in that background wash of clean water. Now, the wet and wet technique allows me to come in, get some pale wash on my brush. Let me bring my tray in here. Get some pale wash of green, and I said there's some yellow, so I'm going to grab some yellow. See how pale that is? It's mostly water, and I'm going to come back and grab some more water. And this is going to give me that pale light green in the background. And since the background's wet, I'm just going to carefully come in and just stain the background. This is layer one. Okay, very, very soft, pale wash, trying to match the lightest value. Even if it's too light right now, let's see if I can turn this light off, it's too bright. There we go. Even if it's too light right now, it's better than it's being too dark. Okay. So I'm going to keep those light, light greens, the yellow green in the background here, and I'm going to just kind of scumble my brush around. All right, see everything is based on a pale, 
pale stain of color. All right, this is dark. It's okay. The dark will cover the light there. Got a little bit more yellow in this area here. So you can see I just went in with that little bit more pigment. Okay. Now that's layer one. That's the base layer one. Now I want to take some of this green here and I'm going to kind of mix it into a little bit with that yellow. And I'm going to punch it up just a little bit with the green. And you can see how it gets a little bit brighter with that green. And again, this is the wet and wet technique. It allows the water to kind of expand and the pigment to expand throughout the space. And I'm starting to kind of put the shapes in of where this is going to go as far as those light shapes because that will give me a good idea as to where the dark shapes are going to go later. Now, you see those little darker dots? Those darker dots are the paper starting to break up. So what that means is it's very, very wet. And if I keep painting on that, the paper is going to start to disintegrate and pill up. So I'm going to kind of let that area dry now, and I'm going to look at another area of pale wash. Just put a little bit more of this greenish texture in here, and I'm going to let that dry. All right? Let it totally and completely dry. So clean my brush, and I'm going to look at my next lightest area of color which is going to be the pale yellows and greens inside the stem and inside the uh, flower petals. So I've got to let this dry. So I'm going to come in with not just clean water. I'm just going to come in now with a pale wash since I want to control that yellow green a little bit more here. Notice too on this leaf, this thin line right here. If I try to draw that dark, so what I need to do is I need to leave it light. So I'm just going to come in without putting water down on the flower petal first. I'm just coming in and I'm putting this pale wash on a dry surface. Pale wash on a dry surface. That allows me to, like right here where I have this highlight, I'm going to grab another brush. I'm going to wet it. And I don't want to lose that light, that white. So while this is damp, I'm just going to lift lift that out almost like an eraser. So I lifted out that highlight there and there's another highlight here. So I just wet the brush, take a little water off and lift. It's like an erasing technique. It's a blotting technique where in that pale wash now I've got those bright lights pulled back again. So I come back in and I'm going to continue and I could pretty much randomly put this yellow and yellow green throughout this entire area of stem. Even here, I've got a yellow and almost like a red. It's almost like an orange color. So I'm going to take some more of my yellow green and just keep going with it. So it's a slow build, guys. Very, very slow build. If anything gets too dark too quick, I can just come back in and I can just add water. Again, this is a dry surface. So it allows me to control the stroke a lot. Get a little more pigment here. You can see this area of the leaf is lighter. So I can put a little bit more pigment in that darker area of the leaf. A little bit more of a yellow in there. Got some very bright brights in here, so I'm going to leave some of that lightness. Got that white, bright white highlight there, so that's where I referenced it with that pencil line. I get a little yellow-orange. Give myself a little bit of a yellow-orange base color on that. Same thing up here. I got a little bit of a couple areas of yellow-orange. Same thing over here, all on a dry surface. A little bit of that stem color up here too. All 
All right, so you can see the process so far. It's soft. Everything is soft. Everything is loose. Now, I want to come back and put a base color of this reddish pink. So with my palette here, what I'm going to do is, instead of trying to wash it out, I'm just going to take a little bit of water on my paper towel. And I'm just going to clean out my watercolor set here. I can move into mixing up some of the reds that I want to start in with here. Again, I need to leave this area totally, totally white. So to do that, I'm just going to put some clean water in with just like that. Just leave that area almost like a little puddle of white because you can see there's some feathering of white. So I'm just going to kind of take that out a little bit in some directions. And now I'm going to put in that pale pink, just the lightest pink. So to make pink, instead of just adding white to red, I'm just going to add more water to red. So take a little bit of red here, get a really loose pink, and I'm just going to start in with the base pink wash for this. And where I put that clean water in there, some of the red or some of the pink will kind of bleed just up to the edge. And it's okay if I go over this dark area because later I'm putting a dark tone in over top of it anyway. All right. So again, I'm doing this on a dry surface so I can control the brush. But again, everything is a soft soft blend. I've got to make sure that I leave that white highlight that I have there. And you notice I'm not trying to outline the shape of the form. I'm painting the pink in everywhere. And I can see the paper starting to disagree with me here, starting to peel up. So I'm going to have to now let this dry a little bit. All right, I got those light values in there that I'm going to kind of get around. I left some of those highlights right in there. I got a highlight here. Of course, I got that really strong highlight right there. All right. Again, it's all loose. I got some pinks in here. Some in here. And some over here. So now that I've got base washes on all of the areas that I need the color, I can start looking at coming back into this background area with a slightly darker value. Now again, as I said, you don't want to use black. All right, Black can be way too harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up to make a good dark tone like I have here. I'm going to mix up some brown. Let me get a little less water. So as I start in my next layering technique, as I start in with the next layering technique, I'm going to use a little less water and a little bit more pigment. So I took some brown and I took some blue. And I'm using brown and blue to make black but I don't want this thing to be too dark too quick. So it's okay if I test this off to the side, all right? That's a pretty good dark, maybe add a little bit more blue into that, a little bit more brown, and you notice it, that is a little bit darker as far as it's not a pale wash. So if I start in here now, this is just gonna kind of block in the dark edge of this area here. That's too harsh right now. And I'm going to show you what we've got to do to soften that. Because if I leave this to dry like this, it's going to be way too harsh and way too dark. So I'm blocking in really those dark areas of color. And you can see it's getting lighter as I go over here. So I just want to block this in real quick. And I want to get down in here real quick all right, with this slightly darker color. Now what i got to do is i got to clean my brush real quick and I'm going to soften. So I take some of the water off of my brush and I'm going to soften that edge. Right? I just put that in a little bit dark. Now I'm just going to pull some of that edge out. 
just soften it and let some of that water kind of bleed around. Still giving me that clean edge up against the flower, but softening that edge so that it doesn't have that striped appearance. Same thing in here. Now this is obviously going to get a little bit darker as we go, but for now I need to soften it. See how I get that nice, still have that nice sharp dark up against the bottom edge of the petal in the reference to it being what we're looking at as a shadow. Now that is what I have to leave it at for now. I can't go back in because you could, again, you can see the paper starting to peel up. So I could go over to this area and I could put in that little bit more pigment. It's a little bit darker, so I'll get a little bit more blue and a little bit more brown, a little bit more water. Take a little of the water off. and I'm making a dark value that is not exactly black. So I'll take some of that pigment off of there. Can't leave that. I can't leave that stripe like that. So I gotta come in immediately, a little bit more water, and let it just bleed and fill the space with a pale version of that dark background color. always best to start off slow and build to dark okay all right so this is a good stopping point for now i'm going to let all this dry and then i'm going to start building some of the textures the other textures in the background here right i got to put these darks in Can do that now all right just blob that dark in up against this edge And I'm going to take a dry brush and I'm going to pull because that edge is really soft. I'm going to take a, just a damp brush and I'm just going to pull and texturize that area right there and just pull that over. Alright, All right, I'm going to let this dry and come back to it in a little while. 